a new year without fear. If you'll turn your Bibles there to 2 Timothy, uh, the first chapter, verse 6 through 12. If you will, as we talk about that tonight, a new year without fear. 2 Timothy, page uh, 279 in my Bible, if that's helpful for you. Uh, the first chapter, verse 6 through 12. No fear for the new year. It says in verse 6 of the uh, second uh, Timothy, verse 1, verse 6. Wherefore I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which is in thee by putting on of my hands. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. Verse 8, be, thou, uh, be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me his prisoner, but he that for the partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began. Verse 10, but is now made manifest by appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death and hath brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, whereunto I appointed a preacher, an apostle, and a teacher of the Gentiles, for which cause I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight and the ones that gather, and Lord, we pray for the ones who are not with us. And Lord, we pray that you'll heal the sickness around us. And God, I pray that we'll be attentive and be spiritual receiving stations as you speak to us. Uh, and Lord, I thank you again for being the God that loves us and that we can make you first and foremost above anything else in our lives. And so Lord, as we look at this new year without fear, fear is paralyzing and fear is controlling people today. And Lord, let us take that fear and turn it wrong side out and let us live with all that we have for you and you alone. Lord, if there's one tonight that's dealing with fear, may this answer that question for them. And so, Lord, I ask your blessings now as we go further. Let us be careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise. But let us be those receiving stations. And we praise your name, Jesus Christ. Amen. A new year without fear. Well, as you probably read in your bulletin, I wrote to you, the future has two handles. One is called fear, and the other handle is called faith. Uh, you can take hold of one of those two handles during this new year, but... Did you, as I shared with you, the Bible says, Fear not, be afraid, 365 times. That's once for every day this new year. And I pray that that will be our motto as we go into this new year of 2024. Now, let me uh, share with you, not all fear is bad. Not all fear is bad. There is healthy fear and then there's unhealthy fear. There is grounded fear and there's ungrounded fear. Then there's productive fear and there's unproductive fear. And, and now the fear of God is a very healthy thing. And that's what we should is have a, a fear of the Lord our God. But you know Solomon, he was the wisest man in all the Bible. And he said this in Proverbs 1-7, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So we need to begin this new year fearing the Almighty God and what our God means to each of us, which means reverence and respect, to stand in awe of God. Back in the old days, the Almighty God, we stood in reverence a great deal compared to what we are today. We live in a no-fear culture today. People don't fear God. They don't believe that our God can still do miracles. And I believe that our God can still perform miracles no matter what you're going through. Matter of fact, Psalms 89.7 says, God is greatly to be feared and the assemble, uh, assembly of the saints and to be in reverence of all them that are about him. So we need to realize tonight is that fear is paralyzing and it can be paralyzing and when Paul writes to Timothy, this young minister, he is actually talking about the negative fear. The negative fear because he says, and we need to hear this, 2 Timothy 1 7, God hath not given us the spirit of fear. God's not giving it to us. He uses that negative sense of the word fear. 
And I want you to realize our culture and our society and our world today wants us to be fearful. Matter of fact, Satan wants us to be fearful. He wants us to be scared. He wants us to stand in fear. But my friends, the greatest thing in the world that Satan can do is to give you the tool of fear and allow you to worry and be full of anxiety that you don't have to be. And so when I look at this, I want you to understand a negative fear will drag you down. A negative fear will bring destruction to your life. Negative fear will even uh, bring distress to you. It will even bring unhealthy habits to your life. Because when we hear Paul write this to Timothy, this young minister, we're going to even find out that Timothy was in bad health. Why was he in bad health? Because of fear. And so we must not allow that fear. Now, <clears throat> you say, what in the world uh, is going on? How was fear put into us? You say, how was fear put into us? Now, God put fear into us, and it was to stand in all of him. But what's the difference, and why do we have fear in our lives today? Listen very closely. Fear and sin are inseparable. So it all boils down to, to sin and fear in our lives. And, and, and they are inseparable. So we must, not, we must be free of fear in this new year if we're going to accomplish. And I don't want to give you two things, but a couple of things along the way. In this passage that I think that is very, very pivotal for us to understand if we're going to go into this new year without fear. The first thing is the destructive power of the spirit of fear. I want to look at the destructive power. What's it doing and why is it doing it to us? I want you to understand the spirit of fear. God has not given us the spirit of fear. But if we have it, that destructive power of the spirit of fear uh, is causing a lot of things. Look at verse 6 and 7, the first stop I would ask you to look. It says, Wherefore I put unto thee remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God, which we need to do in this new year is stir up uh, the gift of God, which is in thee by the putting on of my hands. You've got to remember, now Paul's writing to, to Timothy, the young minister that's left there, uh, the minister to the church, and he says in verse 7, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. So the first thing that I want to look at is, if I'm going to talk about the destructive power of uh, the spirit of fear, is fear and forgetfulness. Fear and forgetfulness. It said in verse 7, God had not given us the spirit of fear. Look at verse 4. Paul is having to remind young Timothy of something he forgot. He says in verse 6, Wherefore I put in thee, uh, put thee in what? remembrance he's saying Timothy wake up have you forgotten have you forgotten what I've taught you have you forgotten what's happened in your life and so very often we need to be reminded because the fear and forgetfulness is a destructive power uh, of fear upon our lives and he says he says wherefore I put verse 6 I put thee in remembrance that thou stir up the gift of God which is in thee by the putting on of my hands so what is he, Paul telling Timothy? Timothy had forgotten. And, and he had forgotten God's power and God's anointing. Did we forget God's power and anointing in 2023? Will we forget God's anointing and power for 2024? You see, Timothy was a young man that was blessed by God. That means he was raised in a Christian family. You'll find in, in the verses, right, uh, probably verse 4 and 5, you'll probably find out that it talks about his mother's faith and his grandmother, his Eunice, his grandmother's faith. He was born in a Christian family. He's, and Paul's saying, have you forgotten this? And you see, here's the thing. When you have fear, fear will bring for forgetfulness, and it will make you forget what you know you have, but you forget it. Why do you forget it? Because you allowed fear to paralyze you from what God desires for you to have in your life. You see, he was blessed. He came from a Christian family. Even the apostle Paul laid his hands on him and anointed him. Uh, As a matter of fact, he says he had known the Holy Scripture. Paul says to Timothy, he says, you've even known Holy Scripture since you were a child. Because it says it in the third chapter of 2 Timothy, verse 15, he says, able to make him wise unto salvation. So God, the Holy Spirit, had come unto him, anointed him with great power, enabled him to preach the Bible, to preach the gospel. But do you know what happened? He forgot it. He forgot it. He was focusing on fear. 
Now, I want you to realize there are Christians and preachers every single day that are preaching with fear. Now, my friends, we've got to stop worrying about fear and li- stop allowing it to, uh, to get us to forget who we are. Do you know who you are in Christ? Are you ready to give an answer? First, Timothy, uh, First Peter 3.15, are you ready to give an answer when somebody asks you for the reason of your hope? Folks, we've got hope when all hope is gone because when Jesus died and you accepted him, he went home to make a place for you because we are the, uh, the bride and he's the groom and it says he's coming back to take us back to our home home in heaven hallelujah it doesn't matter what goes on in this world no matter what happens in america that we must not forget what we have in christ timothy had even forgotten a preacher forgot you see timothy had was so focused on his fear he failed to see the blessings of the almighty god and the blessings of what god had given him you see has that happened to us in 24 and 23 Have we forgotten the blessings that God has given us? You see, because fear will paralyze you. And when it paralyzes you, you become overwhelmed. And when you become overwhelmed, that fear brings forgetfulness. He had forgotten that he had been anointed. He wasn't even fulfilling the task that God had given him to be a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so the first thing that I gather from this is that the destruction of the uh, power of the spirit of fear is fear and forgetfulness. But before I leave that... Isaiah, the 43rd chapter, verse 1 through 3, says this. Now listen to this. But now thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. And that's Isaiah 43, verse 1, verse 2. It says, Thou hast passed it through the waters, and I'll be with thee. And through the rivers, thou shalt not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame rekindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, and Ethiopia and Sheba uh, for thee. My friends, have we forgotten where he is? And tonight I hope and pray that as we go into this new year that we have not forgotten that we are his. But Timothy had. Timothy had been paralyzed by that fear and the fear of what was going on and it had overcome them where he had forgotten. The second thing that I learned about the destruction of fear in this passage to me is in verse 8. And he says this. In verse 8 he says, Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord nor of me his prisoner. So when I thought about the destructive power, not only did I hear fear and forgetfulness, but I also hear fear and failure. Fear and failure go together. And my friends, do you know what happened? Timothy wasn't preaching the gospel like he ought to. Why was he not preaching the gospel like he ought to? Because he was failing to do the God-given task that God had given him. And, and uh, listen, he was meant to be a herald of the gospel, but he had become ashamed of the testimony of the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He was paralyzed by that fear. That paralyzation not only got him to forget, but that fear brought failure in his life. Isaiah 14 verse 3 says, Hard bondage within thou waste made to serve. Now that speaks that fear can put you in bondage. And some of us this past year, maybe we were in bondage. We're ashamed. How can we be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? How can we be ashamed of Jesus that died on the cross and shed his blood for us and resurrected and says, I live in you? How could we be ashamed? But Timothy says, I'm a, he, he says he had become ashamed. He says, be not therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord Jesus Christ nor of his prisoner." That speaks of bondage. And I want you to realize that that Satan has us in bondage when he has us fearing of all things. Listen, fear is forgetfulness. Fear brings failure. Timothy was not doing it. Now, how many of us are doing our God-given task? How many are we doing that? Fear will shackle you. How many of us used to witness for Jesus Christ? How many of us used to sing for Jesus Christ? How many of us used to teach for Jesus Christ? How many of us uh, uh, used to be doing those things, but now we're in bondage and we are shackled because we are ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ? Why? Because society is telling us we are to be ashamed. My friends, I tell you, the church must rise up and not be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
And you see, but that's what uh, Timothy, he said, I, he became ashamed of, uh, of it. And so that brought failure. Now listen very closely, if you will. Listen very closely to me. When God saved you, he called you. And if God called you to be a, 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 a Christian, listen to me. When God calls you, he equips you. He doesn't just say, here, go at it. He equips us for the task at hand. And every one of you have a spiritual gift. Every one of us. Every one of you have the abilities, uh, but fear may keep us from using those abilities. You see, we've got to realize that God in Matthew says the church is supposed to be fruitful. Where's our fruit? He says not only are we going to be fruitful, he says the church will, fruit will remain. Where have our people gone? Where are people going? People are running from churches today because of fear, because they're scared of the testimony. My friends, we must not be ashamed of our Jesus Christ. We must not be ashamed of the testimony of what Christ did in us. How could we ever forget what he's done for us? We owe him everything that we have in our lives today. When you use your abilities, uh, those abilities in 2024, or will you not use them is a question. See, Matthew 25, 25, we might be saying in this new year, well, I was afraid and went and hid that talent in the earth. Now, my friends, I want you to understand that if God has given you and equipped you and you don't want to be a failure to him, you don't want to be ashamed of the gospel, but you want to use the talent that he's given you. If he's given you a talent and a spiritual talent, which he's given each one of us, if you do not know what it is or what your spiritual uh, talent is, we want to help you find that at Fairview Baptist Church. We want you to find that spiritual gift because God wants you to use that spiritual gift because if you don't use it, you may lose it. We can't go hide our talent in the ground. We must hold it high. We must not take our light and put it under the bushel because of fear. Listen, the devastation of fear is ruling the day. And my friends, the destructive power of fear, the spirit of fear, brings us to forgetfulness. It brings us to failure, not doing what we ought to do when we know that we ought to be doing it. But the third thing that I found out when I thought about uh, this passage, when I thought about uh, preaching it tonight and uh, living in a new year without fear and free of fear and fear uh, of anxiety. Listen, it brings so many things, but the last thing is fear and frailty. Fear and frailty. Forgetfulness, failure, and frailty. Listen, I believe with all my heart the Word of God. And this Word says that Timothy was in poor health. It says it in 1 Timothy 5, verse 23, it, Paul wrote to him, often infirmities. So Paul is saying to him, you are often sick. Now, my friends, old Timothy was sick because of his fears. I really believe that as far as I, even as I'm standing here on this stage tonight, made him, made him feel that he was sick. Do you know what fear is? You see, not only does fear bring failure and forgetfulness, but it also brings frailty. It brings you to believe that there's something going on. What is fear? What is fear that brings this destruction in our lives? That Paul is reminding Timothy, hey, I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to get you going. I'm trying to get you going in the right direction and doing what, you want to, what God has called you to do. But now listen, you know what fear is? Fear is sand in machinery. What does sand do to machinery? Well, I can, if you don't know what uh, sand does, it just grinds away, just grinds away, it just grinds away, and it just what? Wears it down. Now, my friends, it did him no good. It did him no good whatsoever. Do you know what faith is? Faith is the oil in machinery. When we believe in Jesus Christ, that's the oil and the machinery. That we keep it greased, we keep it going, we, that faith keeps growing and maturing. You know, and I want you to realize, and I know uh, a lot of old, folk, old, old, old people and old Christians have been Christians all their life say, I can't learn nothing new. If you're an old dog and can't learn new tricks, you're not the Christian that you ought to be. Because God's Word is new every single day of our lives. We're always searching and seeing things in Scripture we've never seen before. So that faith, that all in the machinery is faith. But that sand is our fear. And it just grinds away at us physically, emotionally, and in every aspect of our lives. 
And then people and Christians say, well, Brother Jeff, fear is not dictating what's going on in my life. Are you sure? Matter of fact, a Christian uh, physician, and I'm quoting Adrian Rogers. In 1982, he said, nine million Americans suffered from emotional and mental illness. That's one out of every 20 Americans will have a psychotic disturbance. That was in 1982, Adrian Rogers said. I wonder what it is in 2024. One out of every 20 in 1982? What is it in 2024? And, and it's the spirit of fear. We've got to remember. But you see, Timothy had forgotten. And it's okay to say, God, you know, I've forgotten that I've allowed this fear to, 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 to lead me to, to where I'm failing you, where I'm not doing what I'm ought to do. It's okay to say, I forgot. But my friends, how can we forget the God that lives inside of us is alive and wants to talk with us, wants to communicate with us on a daily basis? And how in the world can we have fear with, and, and, and not realize that it's unhealthy? That it will make us unhealthy. And it did in Timothy's case. He, he was always with often infirmities. He's always finding a way not to come, not to do, not to do the things we need to do. Fear will do the same thing to you that sand does to machinery. It will freeze you up, it will eat you up, and it will grind you up, and it will spit you out. Will fear not do that? Now, Paul's writing to Timothy. He says, I've not given you the spirit of fear. And so I think that's interesting. But I wanted you to hear the destructive power of what that fear does. But the second thing that I wanted to give you tonight is this. Is the dynamic power of the spirit of fear. The dynamic power. I wanted to t talk to you about the destructive sense of, of fear and what it can do. But, but then what does he say there in verse 7? And, 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 and I love it and I love it and I love it. And I know you may not get it, but I get it, I get it. And I go, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. He says, for God had not given us the spirit of fear. Here it is. But. I love the but. And I'm not talking about your backside. I'm talking about the but in the scripture. He says, but, what is it? isn't that what it says? But, he said, I didn't give you the spirit uh, of fear, but. Now listen, what does he say here? If there's any uplifting, if there's any excitement, if there's any joy that's going to come, it should come in the last part of verse 7. He says, but, he has given us the spirit of, but, power, of love, and a sound mind. My friends, I don't know about you, that makes me want to shout. Because that means there's hope with people that deal with fear. That means that God, when that destructive power of fear comes and paralyzes us, we need to, we need to get on our hands and knees and say, God, did I forget? Did I forget who you are and what you've given me in my life? Then I need to get on those knees and I, I need to say, God... Am I failing you? Am I embarrassed of your testimony? Now listen, a lot of Christians are embarrassed of his testimony because the people make fun of us. So what? It's time for us to grow up, be Christians, and, and turn the other cheek and say, God, I'm going to minister for you no matter what anybody else has got to say. I mean, right before service, my wife went into Walmart. And there's an old gentleman in there, and, and, and he started talking to her. And he says, I like those boots. He says, I know where you got those boots. He says, do you know where you got those boots? Stacey said, yeah, I know where I got those boots. Do you know where I got them? He said, I sure do. They're on your feet. Okay. You know also what he said? He says, do you want a free chicken dinner? He, he, you want a free chicken dinner? Well, well, this is what the man gave him. And, and Walmart. Listen, you think Jehovah Witnesses are bad? I, this may but be a bunch of dope in this thing. I don't know what it is. He said, you want, you want some uh, three uh, chicken dinners? Three piece, piece chicken dinner? He gave her three corn and a, and a Ziploc bag like this. I said, I know he had to be sharing Jesus. Only a corny Jesus freak would do that, right? Huh? Well, I don't know who it was. I wasn't in there. I was outside praying in the truck, but not because I was getting a free three-piece chicken dinner. Three pieces of corn. Lydia says, Mama, don't put that in your mouth. It may be dope on it. Now, now listen, listen. Anybody that can do that in Walmart, 
<laughs> there is no reason why there ain't one soul in here that shouldn't stand up and tell the testimony of Jesus. I don't uh, I'm sorry, I didn't know it was y'all's friend. Here I thought I was telling something exciting, but evidently I wasn't. But anyway, the dynamic, <laughs> y'all made me, y'all <laughs> shut up. I, I forgot where I was, what I was talking about. Oh, the, the dynamic power of the spirit of faith. He says, but of power, love, and a sound mind. Uh, and do you really know what he's given you this new year? That's all I can think about. Do we really know what Jesus has given us? Does every Christian know when you accept Jesus what he gives you? He says, I don't give you the spirit of fear. You don't have to be controlled by that fear. You don't have to be grinded by that fear. You don't have to allow it to shrink you to nothing. He says, I've given you power, love, and a sound mind. You see, we've got to remember and reflect back on what Christ has done. And every day, we need to remember that. What has he given us? What has he given us? What is the dynamic power of the spirit of faith? Well, the dynamic power is he has endued us with power. Some of us are sitting here, listen, maybe you don't read your scripture. If you read the scripture, you know everything on this earth is controlled by us that believe in Jesus Christ. Did he not give us that power? That power, that all-powerful God that created this earth, that did it in six days and rested, that same God that split the Red Sea, the same God that rose the dead, the same God that spouted out and stopped armies with one thing of a finger, the one that had uh, uh, stars and galaxies from his fingertips dropping from him is the very same powerful God that is in you. I think people forget that. We're endued with power. Now, what is that endued power? It's called the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit. Luke 24, verse 49, Jesus is speaking. This is what he said. He said, And behold, I send the promise of my Father unto you. Tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. That's talking about the Holy Spirit. And my friends, Paul is saying to Timothy, Timothy, you have power in yourself of yourself. That's what he's saying. He says, you're endued with power. It's inside of you. You see, and tonight I want to encourage you. And I know that, that we're, we don't want to be that church. And I know that we think that are, they're holy rollers. Folks, we need to allow the Holy Spirit to take a hold of us and the power of God to work in us. We've got to allow that to happen inside of us. It means that the Holy Spirit, who is the spirit of power, he lives in you since he's in you he, he, and he's all-powerful. Folks, then why are we afraid? Why do we allow fear to overcome us when we have the all-powerful God and that same power lives inside of us? Why do we allow fear to override the power of God? You see, so when I look at this verse and I think about not only the, the drastic, but the na dynamic power of the spirit of faith, is he's endured us with power. When are we going to live in that power? Maybe we didn't live in that power in 2023, but will we live in that power in 2024? I didn't say raise our hands and walk in gloating and beat our chest and say we're the best in the world. I'm saying have confidence in the God's power that lives in you. That's what I'm saying. It's to allow that power of God to live in you. What does he say in Matthew 28, uh, 20? He says, lo, I am with you always. What does he say in Romans 8, verse 31? He says, if God be for us, who can be against us? What does he say in John 11, verse 26? He says, he that liveth and believeth in me shall never die. What about Matthew 10, 28, where he says, Fear not them which are able to kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who is able to destroy both the soul and the body in hell. You know who he's talking about? See, God's Holy Spirit lives in us. And I don't, you know, and I think that we think we're going to be Pentecostal or something if we exercise the Holy Spirit of God. Folks, the only way I can make it in this world, and I don't know about you, and I'm not, you know, you may not be living this world as a Christian, but I'm trying to live in this world as a Christian. I, 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 I'm, I'm trying to live in this world, and the only way I'm going to live in this world as a Christian with the power of God is the Holy Spirit of God that's inside of me. 
The only way I'm going to make because it says in Jeremiah 10, 23, he says, uh, it's not within us to guide and, and direct our steps. We can't do it. We have to have someone do it for us. Folks, we need to stop living in our power and say, look what I did and start saying, look what God is doing in me and through me and for me because he lives in me. Do you agree? So when I, I think about this fear and I think about this, this dynamic power of the spirit of faith uh, 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 is, is that we've got to realize that he's endued us with power. And I want to encourage us this new year to live in that endued power that he's given us. But the second thing that I thought about is that not only did he say but, he, of power, but what did he say? Of love. Of love. Not only has he endued us with power, but it says he has enriched us with love. He gave us the spirit of love. Do you know that there's no, no more dynamic force to overcome fear than love? There's no greater uh, force. And then I thought about well, what, 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 what is it about love that's going to help us? And, and what's the power of that love? And I thought about his love for us rem, uh, removes fear. Now, wait a second. We've got to allow the love of God to remove the fear that's inside of us. Brother Jeff, maybe you don't understand that I'm fearful about, uh, about finances or, or you don't realize I've got a job or I've got this or that. Listen, 1 John, the fourth chapter, verse 18 says, perfect love casts out fear. We've got to cast fear out. Is this easy? No. But on our everyday spiritual walk, knowing that Christ has endued us with power, we've got to say, God, let that power overrule. And we've got to say, God, let us throw that fear out. Let's stand on the love of you. Not the love of me, but, but the love of you in my life. You see, it's not, uh, not our perfect love for God that casts out fear. It's not your perfect love. Not just because you come to church, you've got perfect love. That, <laughs> listen, that, that, that ain't even has anything to do with your relationship. You're just being obedient by assembling. But my friends, it's not your perfect love for God that cast out fear. It's God's perfect love for us that cast out fear. Because he loves us. Listen, we're not valuable uh, uh, at all. Uh, you say, well, I'm valuable. Folks, the only value we have is because God loves us. Now, what does the Bible say in 1 John? He says, he says, because he first loved us, we love him. See, so as we nestle in the bosom and the safe arms of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ and Father, no longer fear those things. Because if not, what are you saying? What are you saying? That you're not living in that love is what you're saying? You're saying, I'm going to allow my fear, my anxiety. Listen, we've got to put those emotions to the side. God, when he saved you, didn't only save you physically. He, may, he saved you emotionally and spiritually. You can be whole. And we need to live in that wholeness. We need to say that, that I, I'm, uh, he has enriched us with love. Folks, uh, Psalms 27 one says, The Lord is my light, my salvation. Whom shall I fear? In other words, when we allow, when we allow our fear to paralyze us, we're, we're saying we're not taking in the measure of the love of Jesus for us. Now, the love of Jesus is he died for us. He didn't have to, but he chose to. Correct? Nobody forced him. But it, we do it because he loves us and because we've chose, he has chose to love us and chose to die for us. So when we look at this verse, when we think about this enriched with his love, is when we're in his arms, we need to say, God, we can't fear anything because you love us, because you're inside of us. My friends, and, and we must realize, the Lord is the strength of my life, and whom shall I be afraid? we we got to rem remember Listen, he sent his only son to die on the cross. He came from, from heaven, the, the, the grandeur of heaven, down to a stall to die for you and I. That's love. But have we allowed the love of God to overcome our fear? But not only that, I thought about our love for him removes fear. Not only because his love removes fear, but our love for him removes fear too when it's right. When our relationship is in tune with him 
and that we're having a relationship with him. Our love for him, for him also renews and removes fear when our focus is on him. Now, let me ask you something. Have we ever gotten out of focus with God? Is there anybody here that would be ready and willing to admit in 2023, I got out of focus out of the, from the love of God? Folks, this is not once in a year. It's, it's, a, it's probably daily. We get out of focus sometimes. And we need to remember that little song that, that uh, we love to teach our children. That's an old song that's really not a children's song that says, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong. They are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Do we, do we need to sing that daily in our lives? Do we need to be reminded that that love will run out the fear in our lives? Do we allow that love? You see, he's enriched us with that love. He's loved us with that love of our lives. And we need to take that love and push the fear out. So now how do we do that? Focused on him. Not focused on the world. Not focused on our circumstances. Not focused on uh, uh, symptoms. Not focused on byproducts. Not focused on anything but Jesus. What did I say this morning? Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Those things are not being added because we've lost our focus. We need to focus in. And it's a daily, I know it's a daily basis for me, God. Let me be focused on you today. Let me focus on your love. Let your love be on the forefront of my heart and mind. And that's when we need to sing that little song, Jesus loves me, this I know. And you say, well, that's corny, Brother Jeff, because that's a little children's song. Folks, the children will lead us to Christ if we'll allow them. See, but we've got to re remember that. I'll never forget. I was in downtown Orlando. I was at one of the biggest hospitals in Orlando, Florida. And I'll never forget. I had a baby that was dying in the ICU. And I had to get there. And I'll never forget. That, that uh, uh, hospital had a 32-deck car parking place. On the 22nd floor, I had not found a parking space, so I started crying, and I sang, Jesus loves me, till I got down to the bottom and said, Thank you, Lord. I will not park on that thing, and I parked on the street. I didn't care if they towed my car or not. I'm scared of heights if you hadn't figured it out yet. But the whole way down, as I'm going down, and all those cars in, on the to, levels ahead of me are going, bloop, 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 bloop. Folks, those things fall every single day in California, I bet you, because they're man-made. And I was scared out of my wits. But I let Jesus, the love of Jesus, get me down. Because I could have panicked and stayed right there on the 22nd floor and never moved. But it was the love of Jesus Christ. Oh, I'll never forget, I was coming out of New Orleans not too long ago. I say not too long ago, it was years ago. Coming out of New Orleans, and, and I was going over the Lake Pontchartrain. And, 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 and I'm coming over Lake Pontchartrain, and the hurricane come through and blew away half of the bridge. And I was riding on grates on the far right uh, lane on grates. You could look down the grates while you're driving. And you could see the water. And you're not but about 40, 50 or 60 uh, things. I sang, Jesus loved me till I got to the other side of that bridge. And I said, Lord, I'll never go home that way ever again as long as I don't have to get on that bridge again. I sang, Jesus loves me. The love of Jesus will calm your fear if you allow it. I promise you. But not only that, not only do we has he endued us with power, not only has he enriched us in love, but my friends, he has enlightened us with understanding. What does it say? A sound mind. Isn't that what it says in verse 7? A sound mind literally means disciplined mind. A disciplined mind is singular focus. Listen, to be singularly focused and, and, and have our minds focused on Christ and Christ alone is hard. But when you're not going to, uh, when you say, I'm not going to be the devil's plaything anymore, you're going to become singular focused. He's enriched you with understanding. The devil is not going to be able to manipulate you with his fears anymore if you have a sound mind in God. If you're grounded in the word of God and God. 
Don't let the distractions of this world and the distractions of this new year distract you from what we are here for and why we can live in a world without fear in our lives. Stay focused on the Lord and the Savior. Be singular focused on Him and Him alone. If God has given it, then it means that it must be received. Folks, He has given it. He has given us understanding, but we've got to receive it. You see, this world's not about us. It's not about what we're going through. It's about the Christ that lives in us. You know, sometimes we don't receive all that God's given us. Have you received the gift that God's given you? I mean, really? Have we received a sound mind? Is our mind focused on him and him alone? You see, and I, I think that anything this church does or any church in America does, uh, if there's any church watching, uh, just understand. If we don't have a sound mind, then the world's going to creep into our hearts. And how are we going to have a sound mind and understanding is God's given it. We've got to receive it. We've got to open the gift. We've got to say, God, I'm going to be focused on you and you alone. And not me or what's going on around me. You see, sometimes he's given it, but we've not received it. And, and people say, well, I've received it. If you've received it, then I want to tell you, our lives would be different. Fear would not control us and dictate us. Uh, you know, I, I, I've heard many times in my ministry, well, I, 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 so-and-so is going, who cares what so-and-so uh, says? If God is your focus, then it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. If you're following him with all your heart, with all your mind, you're following godly principles, what more do you want? There's always going to be somebody in opposition. There's always going to be somebody in opposition. But we've got to have the understanding of it in our minds. And if we have the understanding, that means a sound mind. It's focused on Christ and Christ alone, and we're listening to him. You see, I want you to realize, if you want your hand uh, read about your future, you meet me after church, and you can pay me $29.95, and I'll tell you exactly what the Bible says. I'm so tired of people living their lives by the horoscopes. I'm so tired of people living their lives by the Joneses and the Smiths. I'm so tired of people running down the road getting advice from somebody else instead of God Almighty that lives right inside of you. He's going to give you that. He wants the best for you. We have a sound mind, but if our mind's focused, he's going to be the first resort, not the last resort. So when I say that, the sound mind, have we had a sound mind this whole year and will we have it this new year? Well, I know a couple of answers. I know a couple of answers that people give. The best thing to do when fear comes is fleeing. Well, fleeing isn't the answer. I, I want you to know Proverbs 28 verse 1 says, The wicked flee when no man pursues. I, I, I know what other people say. Well, I don't feel like it. Feeling is not an answer. You know, I hear people say, Cheer up. You'll feel better. Well, listen, that's some of the bogus world's advice that I've ever heard in my life. The only way you're going to cheer up and feel better is if Christ is your center point. And that's where you're drawing your strength. Uh, the world loves to say, forgetting. Just forget it. Just forget it. Forgetting is not the answer. Because if you ignore fear, it's going to be there when you get back. We need to defeat it. We need to overcome it. We need to allow that fear to dissipate from us. I know, I love it. Well, just fight it. Well, my friends, fighting is not the answer. Listen, overcoming fear and your fleshly strength is impossible. Impossible. You can't do it. You say, oh, I can't. No, you can't. You do not have the human strength to overcome it in your flesh. It has to be the God inside of you. Well, I know people say all the time, faith is the answer. It is. Uh, Psalm 65, 3 says, What time I'm afraid I will trust in thee. We've got to trust in him in our time of fear. There's destruction to fear, but there's also dynamic power where he endues you with power, where he enriches you with love, when he enlightens you with your understanding. He will give you the, the right answers. But the last verse... The last thing I want to say to you about being free of that fear this new year is 2 Timothy 1, verse 12. 
And I want to read it to you. Listen to it. For which cause I also suffer these things. Here, here's Paul telling Timothy. Here's a wealth of knowledge and a few verses, a few phrases. He says, for which cause I suffer, I also suffer these things. Paul's saying, I'm suffering with you, Paul, Timothy. But listen, he says, nevertheless, I'm not ashamed. For I know whom I believe, and I am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto this day. Now, my friends, I don't know about you. He says, I know he says, I'm not ashamed, for I know whom I believe. If you know who you believe, fear will not be a big issue in your Christian walk. And if you're persuaded that he's going to keep what you've given him, when you gave him your life, fear will dissipate from your life. Paul wrote poor old Timothy, little bitty old Timothy, young Timothy, trying to grow in the Lord to stay steady. Don't let fear paralyze you. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight and for those that gather. And Lord, some of us will say, and Lord, I'll be the first one to line up and say, I have allowed the destructive power of fear to dictate. I've, I've forgotten things, Lord, and how good you are. Lord, I have failed you in times. We all have done that, had failure. But God, you've given us spiritual talents, and we must not bury them, we must use them for you this new year. Lord, fear has brought for, uh, fertility, that fatality that where we feel sick because of fear. And tonight, some of you may be sitting here and saying that, that I, I do feel sick because of fear. I, I have failed Christ, and, and I have forgotten how good our God is. Well, my friends, then tonight's the night to say, God, I'm not going to allow that fear to dictate who I am in this new year. And the dynamic power of that spirit of faith let him endue you with power. That's the Holy Spirit. And tonight, if you're a Christian and you don't feel the Holy Spirit knocking on your door, you see, he knocks all the time. When you do something that's wrong or you're going in the wrong direction, the Holy Spirit tries to get our attention. You see that he's endued us with that power of the Holy Spirit to live in us. And if you don't feel that Holy Spirit tonight, invite it in. Or maybe tonight you've, you've forgotten the enrichment of the love of Jesus. That Jesus loves us ex exactly where we are. Now listen, if he loves you just where you are and how you are, listen. He loves you so much he's not going to leave you that way. He's going to change you. But lastly tonight I encourage you that he is without a shadow of a doubt, beyond measure, he has given us the enlightenment of understanding only through his power. Do you know who you believe? And are you persuaded he'll keep what he says he'll do in your life? If you're running from fear tonight, you don't have to. Stop it. Tell Satan to get away that you believe in Jesus. That Jesus will strengthen you and encourage you in the time of your life. So tonight with us, fixing to give an invitation. The altar's open if you want to come. Or, but just maybe a question. If you're dealing with fear in your life tonight, would you just, nobody's looking around, just me. And I want to pray for you this week. If you're dealing with fear in your life, would you just lift your hand so I can pray for you? Amen, amen, amen. Or maybe this past year you said, uh, you know, I, I did fail God and, and, and I allowed the fear to overcome me. But I want to do better next year. Would you just lift your hand so I can pray for you? Amen. Amen. Multiple people. Lord, tonight I love you and I thank you. And, and my words are not to harm me, anybody who's trying to help. Lord, I love you with all my heart, mind, and soul. And Lord, I, I know that I'm, I'm the very one that you're talking about fear. That, I, that you're speaking to me. And God, I, I don't want fear to dictate what we do. Lord, that we'll not be ashamed of your testimony that we'll be ready and willing to say, God, we need you, and we've got you, but let us live out the gifts you've given us. And the gifts you've given us is the Holy Spirit. The gifts you've given us, Lord, is love. And Lord, the gifts you've given us is, is understanding, a sound mind, to focus on you and you alone. Lord, don't let the distractions, Lord, hurt us this new year in 2024. Let us turn those uh, fears away, away and just live and focus on you. 
Lord, I pray you'll bless each one that's gathered here tonight as they go their separate ways, that they'll leave with great strength and understanding of who you are and what you are. And Lord, I just thank you again for blessing us and strengthening us and watching over us as a church. And God, help us to march forward in a greater way. But Lord, we've got to realize change has to take place in us if they were going to see change in the world around us. And Lord, we've got to be ready and willing to say, God, we've lost sometimes. We've stood on the wayside when we should have been living for you. So, Lord, I ask your blessings now as we go into this invitation. You speak to hearts that only you can speak to. And if someone were to respond, we'll wait on you. But if you're lost and you never received them, all you have to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I fall short. I want you to come into my life, and I want you to make me whole. I want a radical change. I want to ask forgiveness for my sins. And I believe that you died for me. And I need you to come in and make me whole and new again. To take the old stuff away and make me new. Well, he's ready and willing. And maybe tonight uh, you just need to pray. Well, you just sit where you are and just pray. But tonight I just pray most of all that you understand a new year without fear. If you're living in that fear, you're not supposed to. So you don't have to. You make your choice if you'll receive his gifts. And we ask your blessings now, and we pray this your precious and holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to stand to sing.